So it's ESP32 dev boards these days <clears throat> that are coming out. One of them is called the Tiny Pico. And from somebody called Unexpected Maker, Matt and Sion. So, what do we have on this? Um, well, the usual ESP32 stuff. Micro Python, Espresso, Arduino. It'll, yeah, obviously, it'll be in the um, platformio as well. Um, JST in the back. Support two types of connectors that you can solder on, depending on what sort of battery you're going to be using. So, four megs and four megs. Oh, yeah, extra uh, PS RAM. Some RGB LEDs, serial UART for programming, 700 million LDO, battery management, nice. Optimized power path, and 14 GPIO is broken out. So that's not bad. What do we have? So we have ground, reset, oh, I'm sure there's, oh yeah, here we go. Ground, reset, and then our GPIOs, four, six of them are touch, three, three, and five volts. And then your spy bus here. Nice. Very nice. All right. So let's uh, put some headers on there. Um, the other thing that um, came with the Tiny Pico is this um, uh, play, play Shield, I think they called it. Yeah, Play Shield. Um, and it's got some, uh, some buttons, a slide switch. Um, presumably that controls power. Uh, I'll have to look into that. But it uh, looks like we have um, an LED for indication, four buttons, reset. There's probably a reset button on here somewhere, isn't there? Mm, I, no. No reset button on here. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah. Let's see, uh, see what this looks like. So my presumption is that that <clears throat> is intended to be the um, symbol that indicates the power connector and that is the symbol that intends to indicate the antenna end of the uh, of the system and so now let's plug it into USB and see what we get if I turn on my USB Oh, there's no sketch loaded on it. Alrighty, so let's uh, load something on here and see what we can do with it. Okay, so the uh, the play shield is a nice little piece of uh, kit. So we've got some uh, some I/O broken out here. You put your peak, tiny Pico, and it's got a JST power header here, but um, well, and I'm, like I said, buttons, but it's also got a light sensor on GPIO 32. Uh, we've got 14, 15, and 26 and 27 are buttons. There's a, a LED on GPIO 4. There's our OLED display, a reset button, and a power switch. Okay, so that switches the, the battery. But what I didn't notice underneath the OLED is... A uh, an amplifier, a mono amplifier, and an audio chip, probably a DAC of some sort, and um, an I squared C three axis accelerometer, or three axis something gyro accelerometer. Not sure. So we'll have to um, take a look at there. So yeah, that's a nice little um, board for doing uh, prototyping with. I really like that. I really like that. Okay, so the Tiny Pico has a great little website that gives you lots of information about the Tiny Pico, including detailed specifications, pinouts, there's a nice little um, pinout diagram for the uh, Tiny Pico, and then an introduction to who actually created this. Unexpected Maker, um, uh, another Australian? Anyways, from the other side of the planet. Um, thank you very much. Sion for um, making the Tiny Pico. This is going to be a fun little piece of kit to play with.
So anyways, what Tiny Pico does is it has a um, MicroPython installed and it's running a particular sketch. So what we need to do is we need to, um, if we want to put a different sketch on it, we can reflash it with a current version of MicroPython and then program it that way using something called the REPL something loop read pro process evaluate loop RP R R E P L read evaluate process loop something like that. anyways um, and I'll show you the links to that so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to um, micropython.org I mean um, if you want to change the software using micropython on your um, tiny pico uh, go to micropython.org and and get click through to the um, tutorial on your version this is the 8266 tutorial, but it's very similar um, in the first part because we have to install something called ESP tool that will allow us to flash code onto our um, ESP chip. ESP tool supports multiple different um, ESP chips, 8266, ESP32, etc. And to do that, it's a pip install ESP tool if for the version of Python. Um, you can do it in either version th 2 or 3, and, um, well, never, never mind about the oldest version. So, then, using ESP tool, you can erase the flash, and what you'll do here is ES ESP tool, and then tell it which port your dev board is attached to. In this case, the example is USB 0, but whatever... Um, yeah, you know, LSUSB um, will give you the name of the device that you've got your chip on, and then erase flash. That's the command. Then afterwards, you're going to deploy new firmware. Now, there's um, a different um, command line because you can tell ESP tool which version of the processor you're going to use. And in this case, we're telling it the port, the baud rate, and the write flash. And, but this command is actually going to be different. And also, we have to download the binary that we're going to flash onto our, our chip as well. So I'll show you those two things next. Okay, this is over at the ESP32 um, help page. So micropython.org in, well, your language, latest ESP32 tutorial. And notice that esptool.py doesn't take a chip variable or a, a, a chip argument. But when you're trying to write flash to it, after you've downloaded the flash that you want to download to write to it, you um, use sorry, you use this command. And so it's tell it the chip that you're using, tell it what port it's on, you're going to write flash, you're also going to tell it that the offset to begin writing that flash is hex 1000, um, and then this part here is the binary that you're going to be writing to your ESP32, and that comes from... Uh, the downloads for the latest version for your for your tiny Pico. If you go to the micropython.org website and then go to the downloads page, you will find um, firmware for all kinds of different boards. So the Pi boards, for the YPi, for the 8266 boards, depending on which, uh, independent of which board you've got, there's firmware for 8266s, and then there's firmware for ESP32 boards, and then you download whichever version that you need. And remember from our earlier work, esptool.py, chip, port, erase flash, and then whichever one of these you decide to download, whether it's the latest or whichever version that you decide to download it to, download and install, that will go in for this parameter. So that would be one of these. And yeah, and that's um, flashing the firmware onto your um, Tiny Pico, and then you get a, a brand new, up-to-date version of MicroPython with a REPL interface, and I'll show you how that works in a sec. So here we go. We've got esptool.py minus chip ESP32, the port that the chip is on, what baud rate we're going to use, we're going to write the flash, add offset, hex 1000, and that's the binary we're going to use, and then hit enter. So it will do the writing, and then verify it and verifying it and there you go it's reset and it's got the new version of tiny pico on it, or of a micro on it there's a utility called ampy 
to interact with the Adafruit MicroPython um, boards. So the Adafruit MicroPython tool, AmPy, is used to, uh, as you can read here. So you need to install it under, under um, Python 3. So pip3 install and, or do it on Windows like this. And then um, if you're on Linux, you can and do it like that. And then you can pop up a brow or a uh, terminal window and get help information. So yeah, AMPI, it gives you a usage or you can um, do AMPI minus minus help, I think. And it gives you the same thing. So, um, AMPI, options, command, arts. Um, so, um, MicroPython tool, tell it what port number, what baud rate you're using, if you want to have any delay before entering raw mode, and then you can show the version and the help, which is what we did here. So um, there's get, there's ls, there's make dir. There, so if you're familiar with the embed platform, when you plug in one of those boards, it shows up as a drive on, um, on your um, file manager. But with MicroPython, you don't quite get that. But what you do get is this serial interface into the board, and Adafruit has created this nice user interface to do things like retrieve a file off the board, list the directories on the board, make a directory, put a file there, reset the board, remove a file, remove a directory, and then run a script that's on the board. So if you have a Python script, you can run it directly there. So this is what the Adafruit AMPI tool gives you is it gives you these different commands get ls make dir put reset rm rm dir and run so much like you could drag and drop files onto an embed board you can put files onto the board and then you can reset the board and you can remove files and then you can remove directories and then you can run scripts micropython relies on the following directory structure and programs in order to operate. So you'll have tinypico.boot, boot.py, and tinypico.py. These tinypico. Uh, underscore boot.py and tinypico.py are two libraries that are used to support the um, the programming on the chip using Python. And boot.py gets your chip into REPL mode. Now, once you've got REPL mode running, uh, run, evaluate, um, run, evaluate, perform, loop, you um, then can connect to the REPL using a command line tool um, like PyCom to open up a terminal onto your device. And so once you run that and you get to hit a couple of carriage returns, you get to something called the REPL. Evaluate, uh, uh, Read, evaluate, pro, perform loop. Uh, so now you can um, enter Python commands at the just like you had a, a Python um, shell. So on on your computer. So now you've got a full Python shell. You've got a way of um, running Python on your microcontroller. And in order to do anything, remember we've got this directory structure here. We've got um, a library tinypico.boot, tinypico.py, this helps the machine boot, and this help. This is the script that um, starts things up, and then you've got a helper library that's already pre-installed. In order to run a script automatically when the, when the system boots, you need to have a program called main.py installed in this um, directory. And in order to do that, you remember we had, where was that help command? Uh, there we go. Um, you've got this put, and we can put a file or folder onto the board. So you would edit your file or folder on on the board, or you would create a file or put an empty file there and edit it there. And then once you save it, the the board will s save that um, uh, file, and it you can reset the board using the reset command, and it will run main.py. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an example sketch onto the board that I've downloaded from the Tiny Pico website. And it's got a bunch of things like main.py, notes.py, it's got um, 
a, a various collection of files and I'm just going to load those onto the board. So you download them from their website and you install them. Okay, ignore this bit, but we put notes, SSD 1306, bitmaps, and main.py onto our board using the put command. And then when you reset the board, USB 0, you reset, it will reset the board and it will play Snake for us. So if you go to the GitHub re repo for Tiny Pico, um, Tiny Pico MicroPython, um, there's a play shield example and I downloaded it and put it into the shield directory and that's how you saw all of those files get put onto there. So here's our tiny snake. All of the game code is in main.py. Just copy these files over to your tiny pico. That's what I just did. And bitmaps, main, notes, SSD, and then tiny pico.py. It's the library that runs um, basically the pinouts for the tiny pico. And yeah, there you go. That's where you get all of those example files. So yeah, fun little board, I have to say. They did a uh, good job of creating a fun little board, which is a nice form factor, um, pretty tiny. And then since it's got all of the esp 32 e things, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got Bluetooth, Bluetooth or NG, you've got um, ample I.O., you've got um, accelerometers in there, a temperature sensor, you well, at least a board sensor temperature sensor you have um, on the board you have a charge controller and then you also have the um, touch sensitive inputs on the ESP32 so yeah no this is a very nice little platforming um, device um, if you're into the ESP uh, family of microcontrollers highly recommended thanks again unexpected maker and um, thank you folks for watching and talk to you later bye for now